Ready to bring them out?
role in this vital part of the judicial system. Thank you. As you know, in order for each of you, for this jury, to decide what sentence to impose for each one of those murders, there must be present certain statutory aggravating circumstances. Then you have to find at least one statutory aggravating circumstance was present, beyond reasonable doubt, in each instance there. In regard to the death of Elmer Buddy Christian, there were eight statutory aggravating circumstances that were alleged and set forth. And I would submit to you the evidence has shown all of those were present, but certainly at least one of those. First, that the death of Elmer Buddy Christian was against a peace officer, Officer Christian, engaged in the performance of his official duties. That's a matter I would suggest the evidence and your verdict has already indicated has been proven beyond reasonable doubt. Secondly, the murder of Officer Elmer Buddy Christian was committed by a person, Jamie Donnell Hood, who had been previously convicted of a capital felony, an armed robbery. His armed robbery is a capital felony under our law and the judge will charge. That, I would submit, has already been proven as well and determined by you with your previous verdict. Number three, the death of Officer Buddy Christian involved an aggravated battery against him, and the judge will define aggravated battery, and it will tell you a person commits aggravated battery if they maliciously cause bodily harm to another by depriving them of a part of their body or by rendering a part of their body useless or by seriously disfiguring a part of their body or a member thereof. And the evidence and testimony is uncontradicted. That the shot that killed Officer Buddy Christian went through his left lung, he rendered it useless. His diaphragm, his stomach, his aorta that you saw a picture of in perforation. And resulting from that, loss of his brain due to no bit of blood being able to flow to it. Aggravated batteries with blue. Fourth, that the death and the murder of Officer Buddy Christian was outrageously and or wantonly vile, horrible, or inhuman in that involved an aggravated battery, which I submit to evidence shows as well. It was a horrible death that involved that. Fifth, the offense of murder against Officer Buddy Christian was outrageously or wantonly vile, horrible, or inhuman, and then involved depravity of mind, and the judge will define depravity, depravity of mind as one where it is utterly corrupt, perverted, or immoral state of mind that moment, the evidence and testimony I submit shows you just that. Number six, that the murder of Officer Buddy Christian occurred while the defendant was engaged in the commission of an aggravated battery against Officer Tony Howard. And you heard that basically Tony Howard suffered with not only a fractured jaw, but perforations of his left side of his face as well as the ear and eardrum. And he suffered basically at least 20% loss of hearing because of the injuries inflicted by the defendant on that particular day. Aggravated back. Seven, that the offense of murder occurred while the defendant was engaged in a capital felony being the kidnapping with bodily injury against Janon Brooks that you have found by your verdict. And as he was killing and shooting and killing Officer Christian, 
he was at that moment in the process of fleeing what he'd done to Don Brooks and what he'd done to Officer Tony Howard at that moment. And lastly, eight, the defense and the murder of Officer Buddy Christian was done for the purpose of avoiding and fleeing the commission for his apprehension at that time. And that clearly occurred. That's what he was doing. As I said, for you to consider the sentence of death in regard to the officer, the death of Officer Buddy Christian, you need only find one of those statutory aggravating circumstances. But I submit to you, each one of those was there. And that shows really the enormity and the criminality involved in what the defendant did on that day, March 22nd, 2011. In regard to Kenneth Lamar Ray, there are four statutory aggravating circumstances set forth. One, that the offense of murder of Kenneth Lamar Ray occurred while the defendant was engaged in an aggravated battery, the commission of an aggravated battery against Kenneth Lamar Ray. And you heard evidence from Dr. Eisenstadt as well that it rendered his left lung useless, that it entered his diaphragm and other areas of his body. Aggravated battery. It was outrageously, number two, or wantonly vile, horrible, or inhuman in that it involved an aggravated battery against Kenneth Lamar Ray. Number three, that it was outrageously or wantonly vile, <coughs> horrible, or inhuman in that it involved a depravity of mind. And it certainly did in regard to Kenneth Lamar Ray. The number of times he was shot and the circumstances with, under which he was shot and killed at that time, as he described himself with his own voice. And lastly, that the offense of murder against Kenneth Lamar Ray was committed by Jamie Donnell Hood after he'd been previously convicted of a capital felony, that is armed robbery. Again, for you to impose a sentence of death in regard to the death of Kenneth and Mari Ray, you must find at least one of those statutory aggravating circumstances. But I will submit to you all four are present and have been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. The defense talked about that armed robbery conviction. And he's talked about that about being falsely convicted that you heard basically what happened in that matter. You heard that he had an experienced lawyer in his first trial who basically challenged the identification that they said was wrong. And that the judge at that time, Judge Steve Jones, denied their motion to suppress the identification And that there was a trial in which that particular victim testified, but that there was a whole lot of other evidence, and there were 562 pages of transcript that was presented during that trial to a jury of 12 folks. And they found him guilty unanimously in 97. But the judge that he has absolutely, the defendant has absolutely no respect for, and apparently his lawyer doesn't either. Granted him a new trial. Because his lawyer did call a couple witnesses that he believed the state was going to call. That he was going to sandbag the state into calling so he could cross-examine them. But the judge...
at that time. And you learned that he was given a new trial with another attorney, the head of the public defender's office. And at that time, all those matters were presented again. It was tried before another jury of 12 folks who found him guilty in 1999. learned how he challenged further that matter himself through a habeas action, and it was denied. And yet he claims, I am falsely convicted. I didn't do that. He says that because he did not accept responsibility for his own actions. He talked about his brother to death. And I will submit to you, that's a matter that when you learn about it and what he says about it became the motivation for what he did to those officers on that day of March 22nd. In his mind, he wanted the exact revenge for what he believed. you learned in this trial and through his own mother who he objected to even though he had her actually start talking about the facts. And he objected and said you know she doesn't know and she goes I do. Yes I do. And she described what she learned about what happened to his brother. significant about this defendant is there's no remorse even now for his actions against Kenneth Lamar Ray or against Officer Elmer Buddy Christian. He is defiant to the end and enraged about everything that's happened to him and continues to try to place blame everyone else. John Brooks, his brother not turning left. Officer Tony Howard for parking his car one way rather than the other. And Officer Buddy Christian and everything else. Let me talk to you about Kenneth Lamar Ray. He was a good man. Loved by his family. He had his faults and dearly because of those. But he didn't deserve to die on December 28, 2010. He certainly didn't deserve to die in the manner in which he died whatsoever. He had a family. He had friends. He had co-workers that cared about him. While the defendant may come in here and ask you and plead to you to not give him sentence of death. Recall, the kid of Lamar Ray was not given that chance. He didn't have a chance to come in here and ask you not to be sentenced to death. The defendant himself imposed that sentence on Ken of Lamar Ray <coughs> without justification or mitigation, but rather because he wanted at that time to get to Kenyatta County. And his actions on that day of December the 28th, 2010, showed a complete depravity of mind committed by someone who had been previously convicted of a capital felony. It was outrageously vile horrible and inhuman what he did on that day. And despite the fact that you had 
many folks come in here and describe the statements he made about how he did that. Not only the folks who were held hostage on that day, but also Darius Lanier, who reported it first thing, March 24, 2011. About the same time that folks were being held over at Creekstone. Reported to the police, in which they took a statement at that time. And then to have it recorded. And despite his voice being on those recordings repeatedly and him describing it with the news of basically what was going on here in Athens playing in the background and him describing exactly what he did to Omar Ray and bragging about it and mocking what Omar Ray did at the time. Outrageously, wantly, vile, horrible, or inhuman, yes. No one deserves to suffer for that. You know, the Mar Ray certainly did. Officer Elmer, Buddy Christian, was a good man as well. We good family. He was just doing his job. The defendant himself told you. surrender. I regret killing that innocent officer. They were going to kill me. So I had to kill them. They were just doing their job. That's all he was doing. It's his job. He had no idea what was happening. He had children as well, just like a martyr. Finn talks about how he's doing this for the kids. For the kids. This is an example for kids. What's gone on in this courtroom since June 25th? Doing this for the kids? He wasn't concerned about Buddy Christian's kids. He wasn't concerned about Omar Ray's. that day of March 22nd, he had kidnapped Jadon Brooks. He didn't have a mask like the others that he doesn't want to provide the names of. He didn't have a mask if he knew what he was going to do with Jadon Brooks, as he described on that tape. And he described to these other folks. arrived over at Sycamore and he saw Officer Howard. He had in his heart what he'd already thought about and what he expressed to others about. What they did to Timothy Hood, I'm going to kill him. And he said, I wanted them to feel what it's like, what it's like to have them lose one of their own. That was what was in his heart. And he's 
and got out of that SUV and ran to the driver's side of Tony Howard's car. That was what was in his mind. Going back to jail was in his mind. He knew that he was wanted for murder. He believed he was because of what Mandrell told him on Sunday before. He knew of what he'd just done to Jadon Brooks, and Jadon Brooks had told the police he escaped. He wasn't going to go back. That was what was in his mind. He got out of that car with that Smith & Wesson 40 caliber. Unbeknownst to Officer Howard, he proceeded to fire two times in the neck area and in the chest. And ran and saw Officer Christian as described by Mr. Bashir. Took a step or two past and came back. It doesn't matter. Excuse justification for what he did to Officer Christian. He basically decided at that time to take his life because it was him or me. He believed and he knew what his actions and what he'd done. And he went ahead and took the life of Officer Christian. tried to take the life of Tony Howard. But Tony Howard had not turned his right over his shoulder. There had been two officers killed on that day. And as Dr. Whitney Webb said, it was a miracle that Tony lived. That that bullet somehow came in his left shoulder and around that spine. It didn't go through the other part of his body. He decided to impose a death penalty. Tony Howard, he imposed it on Buddy Christian. Buddy Christian didn't have an opportunity to come here and ask you. Not to be killed. His family didn't have a chance to come in here and ask you. It, the days after you heard about the threats that he had made, where he laid down in the snow to kill the plug. As it snowed that December, that Christmas, where he threatened to kill Kenyatta Campbell, which is what originally that was all about with Jadon Brooks and Omari Ray. Where he threatened to kill Ken Campbell's aunt and his mom and was looking to have those folks go to a drive-by with them with the children in the car where he basically threatened to kill Rashi Scott and little Bishop as described by his own witness Brian Mackey his mind was utterly corrupt perverted Officer Buddy Christian and what happened to Kenneth Amari Ray each for each of those death penalty should be imposed. But you know the facts of each one of them are sufficient for you to impose the death but there's an inescapable conclusion
he cannot control the situation. He becomes enraged. And we've seen that, I would submit, during this trial on occasion. We saw the best example yesterday. On the questioning of his mother. She tapped just like that. Vicious. to ensure that that doesn't happen is to exert control over evil. To make sure it doesn't happen again. Because I would submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, the defendant Jamie Hood, if he ever, ever, harbors the exact same feelings that he expressed and said he had during that time four and a half years ago. And he becomes enraged by his actions and what he did to Kenneth Lamar Ray and the horrible death that he suffered but all, and also for what he did to Elmer Buddy Christian and to both of them and is depraved completely depraved and defiant and lack of remorseful state of mind but also because only through the imposition of the death penalty will he be incapacitated and ensure he will never see the light of day and have a chance to ever do it again. Ever. Only through that. Not only is it an appropriate sentence, but it is necessary to ensure that he never, ever has a chance to do this with anybody. With anybody. Ever again. I would ask you verdict of death in regards to the death of Kenneth and Marty Ray. I would ask you to return the verdict of death in regard to the murder of Elmer Buddy Christian. Justice, I would submit, demands that that's the only appropriate sentence.